Hey guys, we're gonna go over MNTS and today's uh, basically flavor of the day and what my whole thought process was there and what I was looking to get out of it. So MNTS, we have a couple key levels here, 423 and $5. These are the levels that we were watching in the pre-market session. We were looking for a close over 423. So if you look at our key levels in our, uh, our Discord today, and this is on, uh, let's see, 10, 16, 23. So if you look at that, you'll you'll see our key levels were added this morning and 423 is that key level. So if we zoom in to 423, uh, my thought process here was, I'm not really sure I wanna take this trade. And the reason for that is because I really just look to assess these conditions. So uh, I'm looking for a close over this level for me to go into the trade or look for it as a long possibility. But I also wanna keep in mind that we have major red flags to look for when trading this strategy. And so those major red flags are not designed to keep me out of the trade, but what they're really designed to, uh, to do is to help me better assess the chart and know if I wanna go heavy or not into my size and do I wanna wait for a candle to close under to bail or not. So in other words, what I'm saying here to make this very clear is as we were gapping up and if I turn off this uh, volume indicator uh, here, you'll see as we were gapping up, MNTS had a bullish vertical trend. So that means we had uh, five or more green bars in a row and we have a massive move on a one minute chart here. So these are one minute candles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is a very uh, risky type of setup. And even the setup here, this close over, which is really what we're focused in on, this was the first close over, right? So if I'm looking for confirmation, then this is the setup that I'm looking for. I need it to close over this key level hold that key level, and then look for continuation and targets above. Now, in uh, this situation, we were looking at 450 because that's a mental half dollar test, and we had a key level above at $5. So what I'm looking for that means is I will get in if we get over 423. Where I get in will depend on the uh, level one, level two data sometimes, and sometimes what the overall volume is, because of course the volume is gonna dictate where the spread is, and the spread is between the bid and the ask. So that's that price between the bid and ask. So if you see a wide spread, someone says it's a very large spread, then what they're saying is that there's a large number or gap between those two numbers. So maybe you see 423 on the bid, but you maybe you wanna see, or maybe you see something on the ask that's totally different. So depending on your buying the ask, selling the bid, look out for that. But overall, not to confuse anything, we had a bullish vertical trend, right? We had five or more green candles in a row, which is one of the five major red flags that we look for. So this is a bullish vertical trend. So I can take this trade, but after evaluating that chart, I want to assess and then really adjust my approach based on what I see here, right? So that's one major red flag right there. You can see that the background of this chart is in red. So it's another uh, indicator that I have built, which is the oversold indicator 3.0. Uh, which is just a variation that we've been growing onto, but it's basically painting the background of the candle uh, or, or excuse me, of the chart based on conditions. So it's basically telling me that it's extended. So it's very extended and almost overbought. And so it may need a breather or a pullback. So do I wanna take this trade? Again, it's just weighing out the pros and cons. So my thinking on MNTS was this, guys. I mean, the 423 was nice, right? We measure the gap. If we can get filled in here and get filled up here, we're looking at 18%. Now, the issue I see here is we were hitting a short watch target, a profit target, and overbought. So we were extended, very extended. So yes, we can take this trade, but no, I don't want to throw the kitchen sink at this because again, this is not a high quality setup. Now, not to say it won't continue and not to say this is still not confirmation. This is still confirmation. It closed over our key level. That's all we need. That is volume, and there's our price action. Now the price action is telling us that it's a bit extended, right? It's a little extended to the north side, to the high side. So maybe again, if I'm trading for an example, uh, uh, for example purposes here, maybe I trade 5,000 shares typically on, on a good setup. Maybe here, I wanna reduce that to half. Maybe it's 2,500 shares, or maybe it's even less than that. Maybe it's 1,000 shares, maybe it's 500 shares, or, uh, uh, another way to approach this, and this is how I went about it today, and this is really depends on you and your risk tolerance, is uh, maybe you just avoid the trade altogether. So maybe it's just not really worth the, uh, the, the risk that's associated with this type of setup. So MNTS confirmed its level, 
gave us confirmation of our key levels. That's important. So if you're looking for a risk it for the biscuit setup, there it is right there. And again, it's not to say that my approach is the right approach, right? Because still the, the theory and the strategy remains the same. If I say a key level is 423 and we close over that level, then whether I think it's bearish, bullish, whatever I think I'm indifferent, it doesn't make a difference. The chart is telling me that it is bullish. Sure, there's some red flags there. Sure, there's some indicators letting me know that it is extended and maybe needs a breather. But did it care? No, it didn't. And that's why confirmation is so great because what it's doing is it's helping us assess the conditions and better, uh, you know, better situate ourselves when seeing these conditions. So did this fit my risk profile at this time? No, it didn't. What time was this? This was around 9.36 a.m. Eastern time. So if you've ever been trading with me for a while, a lot of traders have been, I don't trade too uh, aggressively after the market open. I really prefer this move to happen in the pre-market, but as you can see in the left-hand side, it didn't happen in the pre-market, right? It happened in the market hours. So I was a bit reserved. I didn't take the trade. I missed out on a nice move. As you can see, it was a really nice, uh, strong move. We hit our target $5 but I'm okay with missing that move. And even if I did take that trade, let it be very clear and known that my approach would be still. I'm assessing this chart. I'm seeing that the conditions are not in my favor. And so therefore, yes, I may wanna take part in this trade, but I definitely, definitely want to reduce my size and uh, tighten up that stop loss. And so you can see 423, if I was in here, mental stop, hard stop, whatever you carry, it might wanna be a little tighter in here because of course this is extended. And yes, it did work out and that was confirmation. So now let's uh, go on to the right-hand side. And you know, I avoided this trade and I could have taken it with a smaller size. I basically have to be okay with taking a loss is what it means uh, because I, I'm running that risk. And then over here, wouldn't you know, I took this trade and then took a loss on it. Now this was important too. This key level here, this purple line is $5. So this was a key level on MNTS as well. So after we filled the gap to the left-hand side right there, filled the gap with that little, uh, that needle or that, uh, that wick that gapped up. Now we're looking to the right-hand side. We're looking for a close over $5. Well, guess what? I took this close right here over five. I was a bit anxious. I took it with a very small size and I thought maybe I could add if we dip down into this level, but then you know what? I took my small size and I said, it's a do or die setup. It's basically just a lotto. And a lotto to me means, again, if I take, uh, for an example, 5,000 shares, maybe I take a thousand share order lotto or a 500 share lotto, or maybe even a 200 share lotto, whatever it may be. Something smaller where I can be okay if it goes against me and my, my decision-making wasn't on point and I end up suffering a loss, which is very likely when you see things like, if I turn this indicator back on, you'll see these major reds on this chart, right? So we are well aware that there's major reds and something to be concerned with. And so did I take this trade? Yes. Could I have sat out just like before? Of course I could have, but I adjusted my approach and I took profits made this morning on ticker PS, uh, PCSA, excuse me, and took them and, and really just rolled them back into MNTS. It didn't work out for me. I stopped out on this candle, but I want to go over this because Although I took a loss here on this candle, and although I did uh, basically wash out my gains on the day, I'm okay with that. Why? Because this is a very risky setup, just like it was before. And I sat out before, I didn't sit out this time, and sure enough, it bit me a little bit, and that's okay, I gave back profit. I adjusted my approach, which is the most important part of the strategy, because what it's doing is it's helping us assess and really uh, know whether it's worthy of our uh, larger size, right? I don't, I don't wanna just throw money around. So on MNTS, you guys will then notice that we had that major red, even though we hit that level or just about hit that level up above. And if I put a price target on uh, this purple line, you'll see it's 545. So that was the target, right? We went up, we fell back down. I filled here, exited here, got caught in it, but it did not close under our next level, which was 415, this uh, red dotted line. 415 did not close under and so it held the level and as you can see held the level continued up and hit new highs from there don't mind my dogs barking so very clear to see that confirmation again worked out but my execution was a little on the poorer side but i'm okay with that because if this was a better setup i would be more aggressive but because this is a lower quality setup i'm okay with ending flat on the day and just walking away before getting caught in something uh, worse like this over here. Now, 
Here's the other side of the coin, right? If I uh, get rid of a few of these, here's the other side of the coin, right? We're starting to die out in volume. We're falling down. We're getting a bounce watch. That's all well and fine. But uh, you could be a trend trader. The key level was 423. So when it closed over 423 here, you could have stayed in your position. Now it curled back up and it came all the way back here, uh, up to back up here around 550, 545. That is not very probable. That doesn't happen all the time. This is very, uh, very uh, risky, very different, but it, it, it happened to work out. This is not something that often happens and therefore the probability is less likely. And so I wanna be a little weary about this. Now, if we're just trading the key levels, we can see that there was entries, exits, you get in, you get out. What I love about that is I'm in and out of my position. I can be done, I can shut it down, I can educate, I can go spend time with our team, I can go spend time with my family, I can get outside, I can do things, I can enjoy my life. And that's the point of trading, right? That was the whole point of getting into trading to begin with was to enjoy my life. We can see here on MNTS, we came back down. Now, doesn't mean it's gonna continue further down, but what it means is that we don't care, right? We were trading this gap right here, we're done. We're trading this gap right here, we're done. We set alerts, right click, add an alert, and voila, we are good to go. We can just walk away. We can see now that we have alerts set on MNTS. If we close over our key level of 545 and 550, it's go time. If not, then why would I sit here all day long waiting for that to happen? Just set those alerts, walk away, and that's it. But the real point of this video, guys, uh, was more so to go over why I didn't take MNTS. And, uh, you know, again, it's not the, the best approach out there. I'm not saying that at all. It's just my approach. I want to educate others on my approach and how I really go about navigating through this market. It's not always the best way. Sometimes I get caught in a, in a red trade like I did over here, but it's okay because I'm sticking to my rules. I'm sticking to my strategy that keeps me consistently profitable. And that's what's most important. So guys, I hope you learned something from this video. There's going to be plenty more. So thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.